Smoke Jumpers, Life Fighting Fires, Mark Beyer, Genre, Expository Text, Gives Information About Real People and Events. As you read, think about the skills needed to become a smoke jumper. Question of the Week How can we prepare for emergencies? Extreme Risk Fighting forest wildfires is a dangerous business. Some wildfires, however, are easier to get to than others. They can begin to burn near roads, or they can move through low lying forests, on flat ground, or gentle slopes. These wildfires are fought bravely by ground crews of hotshots. Hotshots can be a line of five, eighteen, or seventy men and women. Who are working very close to a blazing wall of fire. Other wildfires burn in far off, remote areas of a forest. These wildfires can start in a deep gulch or high on a mountainside. These places are often far from roads. The only way to get to these blazes quickly is by dropping firefighters from planes. So, what do you get when you cross a wildfire firefighter with a parachutist? That's right, a smoke jumper. Smoke jumpers and hotshots are equally dedicated to putting out wildfires. Their mission is the same stop wildfires before their destructive energy destroys the forest, kills the animals, or threatens human life. Smoke jumpers have an added task, however. Before they even hit the ground, smoke jumpers are hard at work tracking the fire, finding the right place to jump, and concentrating on landing safely. Once on the ground, smoke jumpers work the same way any forest firefighter does. They cut down trees and drag them from the wildfire's path, they dig up stumps. They chop away the underbrush. Then they turn the soil over and over until just dirt remains. All of this work is done while the fire creeps closer to them. The firefighters create a fire break, a wide dirt barrier, which is essential in helping to stop the spread of a wildfire. Sometimes, though, even 50 feet of dirt. Is not enough to keep sparks from drifting over to another dry forest area. Little sparks can create raging fires. Smoke jumpers can work for days against a large wildfire. They might work 18 hours with only breaks for food. Their dedication has stopped the destruction of millions of acres of forests all over the world. Jumping into a fire. Every summer seems drier than the last up in the Rocky Mountains. Underbrush is like a tinderbox. A careless hiker or a flash of lightning could cause the area to quickly go up in flames. And then it happens. Lightning hits in the high gulch. Smoke is spotted for miles off. There are no roads nearby. And before long, the wildfire may get out of control. This is a job for smoke jumpers. Danger lurks all around the smoke jumpers. The airplane fights high winds caused by the rush of air from the blaze below. The plane must get the smoke jumpers to the drop zone. There is no large clearing. Rocks line the mountainside. The area is remote. If the fire rages out of control, rescuing the smoke jumpers will be difficult and dangerous. What is the plan? Situations like this are almost a daily routine for smoke jumpers. However, they trust that their training will help them overcome the obstacles that make fighting wildfires so difficult. Special uniforms, equipment, and tools also help smoke jumpers fight wildfires as well as provide them with protection while they battle those blazes. Most of all, Smoke jumpers work together and help one another to make it through a long day or days of wildfire firefighting. 
jumpsuit, and safety gear. You don't go to the beach without your swimsuit, do you? Of course not. Well, smoke jumpers don't jump from an airplane into a firestorm without the right clothing either. Smoke jumpers wear lightweight jumpsuits made of fire retardant material. The jumpsuits help keep them cool during the long workday digging a fire break. Jumpsuits are either bright orange, white, or yellow. These colors can be easily seen from the air and through the trees. If a smoke jumper gets separated from his or her crew or stick during a jump or while fighting a blaze, a plane has a better chance of spotting the bright colored suit. Jumpsuits are padded to break the fall of a parachute jump. This is important in the rocky areas of a drop zone. Each jumpsuit has several large pockets for carrying small tools and the all important safety line ladder. Smoke jumpers also wear gloves while fighting wildfires. Gloves, however, are not worn during the jump because controlling a parachute is easier with bare hands. A helmet and goggles are supplied to each smoke jumper. The helmet is made of aluminum because this metal is lightweight and strong. Also, metal does not burn. So, smoke jumpers don't have to worry about burning embers floating around while they work. Attached to the helmet is a face mask, somewhat like the one on a football helmet. The face mask protects a smoke jumper from branches when he or she lands in a tree. Goggles protect the eyes from wind, flying embers, branches, and smoke. The parachute. The master parachute rigger is in charge of packing each smoke jumper's parachute. Parachutes must be packed in a certain way for them to unfold properly during a jump. A poorly packed parachute could tangle in its own ropes and send the smoke jumper crashing to the ground. As the plane carrying the smoke jumpers nears the drop zone, the smoke jumpers check their parachutes and gear. The parachute is attached to their backs by a harness. The harness is strapped around a jumper's shoulders, across the chest, and between the legs. The harness keeps the jumper attached to the parachute during the fall. An emergency parachute sits in a pack against the jumper's stomach. The Jump Master The Jump Master does not jump with the smoke jumpers. The jump master's job is to make sure that the smoke jumpers are jumping from the right place in the air so that they will land safely near the fire. The jump master does this with the help of the airplane pilot. They both spot areas on the ground that could serve as the landing zone. Before the jump master gives the signal to jump, however, he or she must be sure that the plane is in the right position. To do this, The jump master drops crepe paper streamers out of the plane from 1,500 feet. This is the proper height for smoke jumpers to jump from. The jump master watches the streamers fall toward the ground, and their path tells the jump master if the wind direction is right for the smoke jumpers to drop safely to the ground. While the jump master and the pilot spot for landing zones, The smoke jumpers look out the window at the land below. They study the ground and the area near the fire. They need to know where clearings, rocky land, and the wildfire are located. When the plane is positioned correctly, it circles the drop zone. The smoke jumpers then prepare to jump. They hook their parachutes to a static line, which is a thick wire attached inside the plane. That holds parachute release cords so that smoke jumpers' chutes open automatically when they jump. When the chutes open, the smoke jumpers don't just float down. Instead, they use the parachute shroud lines attached to the chute to steer toward the landing zone and away from the fire. When the smoke jumpers hit the ground, they roll to absorb the hard impact. They quickly pull their chutes onto the ground and gather them to make sure no wind pulls the chutes 
and drags their bodies along the ground. Sometimes smoke jumpers actually aim for trees if there is no clearing. Once caught on a tree, they drop themselves to the ground with their safety line. Smoke jumpers get out of trees quickly. They don't want to be caught dangling from a branch when fire is nearby. Bundled tools. Once the smoke jumpers have gathered themselves on the ground, they need their tools. The plane circles the area and drops more parachutes. These chutes hold packages containing tools, food supplies, or other equipment. If a stream, pond, or lake is near the fire, hoses and water pumps will be packed too. The parachutes are colored to identify what they are carrying. A red parachute's bundle might include shovels and saws. A yellow parachute might carry food supplies. Color-coded supply parachutes save smoke jumpers valuable time. The last thing a smoke jumper needs is to find sandwiches when he or she is looking for a shovel, ready to move out. Once the supplies are gathered, the smoke jumpers head toward the fire with all their gear on their backs. Now the real work begins. But before they can get to the fire's edge, the smoke jumpers must determine where the fire is, where it might be heading, and the best way to tackle the blaze. Getting home safely. Putting out a wildfire may be the job that smoke jumpers are sent to do, but the first order of business is to keep everyone safe. Over the many years smoke jumpers have been fighting wildfires, very few of them have died. This is because safety precautions are taken before, during, and after a fire is fought. As crazy as these men and women who work as smoke jumpers may seem, they have no death wish. The opposite is true. They love the environment and want to help keep it safe for animals and humans. Their job is extremely dangerous, but they are professionals. They understand the risks and know what to do to avoid death. When the fire has been smothered and all the work is done, it's time for the smoke jumpers to return to base. But since they dropped from the skies into this remote area, how will they get out? Often by the same method they got in. The team radios its base. And calls for a helicopter to come pick the smoke jumpers up. Sometimes the team must walk a long way to get to a clearing where a helicopter can land. This walk is a victory march. The success the team has achieved by putting out a destructive fire is well worth the few hours that smoke jumpers must hike to get to the rescue area. When all are aboard, a cheer goes up. They're going home.